My name is Liam Devizi, and I'm an engineer at Ionic. Today, I'm going to be discussing how to analyze and improve the performance of your animations. A common recommendation you may hear is to stick with animating opacity and transform values as they are the most efficient. Using the tools that Chrome, Firefox, and Safari provide, we are going to investigate why this is the case. So let's get a quick breakdown of our talk before we jump in. First, we will look at Ionic Animations, which is the animation utility we will be using. Next, we will be introduced to the key performance metrics that we will be measuring our animations against. Then we will begin analyzing our animations in various browsers. And finally, we will wrap up with resources for further learning. So let's talk about Ionic Animations. Ionic Animations is our open source animations utility. It provides the tools developers need to build highly performant animations regardless of the framework they are using. It's built on the Web Animations API with a fallback to CSS animations for browsers that don't support web animations. Developers do not need to be building an Ionic framework application to use it, as Ionic Animations is compatible with any web-based project. Ionic Animations has a 40% better animation performance than leading animation alternatives, and it has a 98% more efficient CPU compute. Now, you don't need to be familiar with the Ionic Animations API, but just know this is the tool we are using to build these animations. As a quick example, this is a demo from a hack day we had at Ionic a few months ago. My project was to try and recreate the Wallet app on iOS. So this is an Ionic framework application utilizing our animations API under the hood to power all of these transitions. We are easily getting 60 frames per second here, and as we will see later in the presentation, we will also have low CPU and energy usage. Now that we've talked about the tooling, let's look at the metrics. There are four key metrics we need to be familiar with. The first is average frames per second over the course of the animation. Now this is typically the benchmark that end users will notice the most, so it's really important that this is as close to 60 frames per second as possible. The next metric is the amount of work the browser needs to do as a result of your application's code. This includes layouts, paints, and evaluating JavaScript. All of this happens in the same main thread as the rest of your application's logic, so it's really important to keep this to a minimum. Our third metric will be the average percentage of the CPU that is actively working during your animation as a result of your code. While using the CPU is inevitable, it's important to minimize the overall usage here and ensure it goes back to idle as soon as possible. And this has a direct impact on our fourth and final metric, which is energy consumption. Animations with a higher energy consumption will drain a device's battery faster than animations with a lower energy consumption. Typically, a higher CPU usage results in a higher energy consumption. So a quick note, Throughout this talk, you will hear me referring to optimized animations and non-optimized animations. Let's go over what this means. In browsers such as Google Chrome, CSS and web animations are typically handled on a thread known as the compositor thread. This is separate from the main thread where layouts, paints, and JavaScript are executed. Animating properties such as transform and opacity can usually be handled by the compositor thread as well. These are typically considered optimized animations in that they run off the main thread and are not easily susceptible to jank. On the other hand, non-optimized animations are animations that trigger tasks such as paints or layouts. This causes the main thread to do additional work. The overhead of doing these layouts and paints typically overshadow any of the other work associated with your animation. In other words, Animating expensive properties prevents the browser from being able to fully optimize your animation. As we will see in a moment, 
We have a simple demo page created that creates an animation which shows bubbles floating up our screen and fading out. We have two variants of the animation, optimized and non-optimized. The optimized animation uses a transform to move the bubbles, while the non-optimized animation uses the bottom CSS property. Now, a more realistic scenario would be animating in a list of items or animating an accordion component. However, these small examples really don't convey the full impact of what a non-optimized animation can have on your application. In a real life environment, you are likely going to be analyzing animations while other main thread processing is going on. As a result, I decided it would be better to isolate an animation and increase its scale to better emphasize its impact as we walk through these tools. Now, with that being said, let's get into the demos. So I want to start with Firefox because this browser has a really cool utility called the Animation Inspector. I want to take a look at it first to give you an idea of what you can expect to see when looking at the tooling in other browsers. So I'm going to open up my developer tools and go to the Inspector tab. We're going to start with a non-optimized animation animating 250 bubbles. I'm going to start the test let it run for a few seconds, and then we'll pause it. So I'm going to pause all this, and notice right away that Firefox gives you a synchronized timeline for every single animation. These timelines are green because web animations was used. It would be orange if a CSS animation was used, and it would be blue if a CSS transition was used. This is an excellent way to get a top-down view of what all of your various animations are doing especially if you are trying to manage dozens, or in our case, hundreds of animations. Now you might be wondering, what is the lightning bolt next to each timeline? This lightning bolt is used to indicate whether or not an animation is being optimized by the browser. Hovering over it, we learn that some, but not all, properties are being optimized. Clicking on one of these timelines will present a more detailed breakdown of the animation. Firefox will tell you exactly which properties are not optimized. In this case, opacity is optimized, but bottom and left are not. We can tell because the opacity has a green lightning bolt next to its name, where the other two don't. Firefox can also inform you that certain properties could be optimized if you did things a little bit differently. These properties will appear underlined. For example, if you try to animate the left property and the transform property, the transform property actually would not be optimized because you were trying to synchronize it with the animation of a left property. If you were to remove the left property, then transform would be optimized. So let's switch over to the optimized animation and see what that would look like instead. So again, I'm going to let this run for a few seconds, then pause it, and we'll take a look at our results. So I'm going to pause all this, and again, we have our synchronized timeline that show all of our animations from a top-down view. And again, we're going to hover over the lightning bolt and confirm that this time all animation properties are being optimized. Clicking on the timeline lets us confirm that both opacity and transform are being optimized. So this animation inspector is very powerful. If you are confused as to why your animation is not being optimized, this is a really great tool to use. Now let's take a look at Google Chrome. I have the same demo page loaded up. We're going to start with a non-optimized animation at 250 bubbles. This time, we are going to run a performance test and look at the results together. So I'm going to open up my developer tools, make sure I'm on the performance tab, and then we'll start our tests. It's a good idea to let your test run for at least 15 seconds in order to get an accurate reading. Anything less than that, and your results may be off. So I'm going to let this run for a few more seconds, and then we'll stop, and we'll let Google Chrome process its results. Once it's done, we should be presented with a lot of graphs and charts. We are going to look at three things, the main thread, frames, and a tool called the Performance Monitor. 
let's start by looking at the main thread. So we're gonna select a segment of the test and right away you can see that the main thread is quite noisy with tasks. Zooming in, you can see that we're doing style recalculations, layouts, and much more. If I were to select a larger segment and take a look at the summary result down here, we can see that over nearly 13 seconds of this test, our main thread is idle for only about one second. So the main thread is constantly working over the duration of this animation. Remember that we want to keep the work here to a minimum. Let's jump to the frame section. We can find the frames by hovering over these bars here, or we can take a look at the green bars up top. Hovering over it, we can see that we're getting from anywhere between 40 to 60 frames per second. While this may not be terrible, keep in mind that the main thread is working hard to get us here. Looks can be very deceiving, so just because you have 60 frames per second does not automatically mean you have a performant animation. Now, there is another way of checking performance on the fly. DevTools has a somewhat hidden pane that gives you an additional set of tooling. If it's not already visible, you can hit the escape key to display it. And we're gonna make sure we are on the performance monitor tab. This tool gives us a real time look at what is going on in our application. Let's start the animation back up again. Notice that this time the CPU usage jumps to over 50%. Similarly, we are doing over 70 layouts and over 70 style recalculations every second. This performance monitor is another great way to show just how hard our computer is working to achieve the frame rate we are getting. Okay, let's jump over to our optimized animation. So we're gonna run this test again for about 15 seconds. And we're going to take a look at the same results, main thread, frames, and then we'll look at the performance monitor. We're going to let our test run for a few more seconds, and then we'll let it process and take a look at the results. All right, so I'm going to stop this. Google Chrome is going to process its results. And after stopping the test, we should see that the results right away look significantly cleaner than before. There is far less work going on in the main thread, which is great. And additionally, selecting a segment shows that the main thread is idle for most, if not all, of the animation. The frames results up here show that we are getting pretty close to 60 frames per second. Now compare this with the results that we saw before. We're still getting a great frame rate, but our computer is working significantly less to achieve this frame rate. That's great, as we will also have a relatively low energy drain. Let's get a real-time look at our animation. So we'll open the performance monitor again and start the test. Notice that this time, the CPU usage averages out to less than 1%. This is a stark difference from the non-optimized animation. Similarly, we are no longer doing any layouts or style recalculations every second. This is a significant improvement over the non-optimized animation. With the tooling that Chrome provides, we can begin to see why it is really important to understand what the browser needs to do in order to run your animation rather than just focusing on the frames per second. So last but certainly not least, let's take a look at Safari. Similar to what we did in Chrome, we are going to take performance samples of both animations and look at the performance information that the browser gives us. So we're gonna start with the non-optimized animation at 250 bubbles. And let's open up our developer tools and go to the timelines tab. From here, we are going to look at two results, layout and rendering and CPU. So I'm gonna start my test and I'm gonna start this timeline and again, I'm gonna let this run for about 15 seconds. Now you might be wondering why we are not going to look at the frames results. The reason is that the results in that tab really have more to do with the event loop than all rendering frames. In other words, it doesn't really give us a great sense of how the web animation in particular is performing. Okay, great, so I have my test results and let's start with layout and rendering. Layout and rendering, we see these red blocks and we see these green blocks. 
Let's take a look at the green blocks. Since we are using a non-optimized animation, we need to repaint 250 bubbles every single frame. This leads to all the green blocks that you see in this timeline result. Now, there are many more than we see there, but since this is a condensed timeline, Safari is going to render it as one or two big blocks. Paints are typically very expensive, so you want to minimize them at all costs. The fact that we are doing a lot of paints is not a good sign. Let's take a look at the CPU results now. This will give us more insight into the impact that these paints are having. Safari has a really great CPU usage breakdown here, and it presents all the information in a clean and easy to read way. Right away, we see that the average CPU usage is over 80% and the energy impact is rated as high. This means that running this animation on a device is going to drain that device's battery quickly. Remember that we want low energy consumption and we want to return our CPU to idle as soon as possible. Down here on the left, Safari also gives you a breakdown of which threads are doing processing. We can see here that over 80% of all main thread processing is being spent just painting bubbles. Recall that this is the same thread the rest of our application's logic runs in, so dedicating over 80% just to paints is not great. Now that we've seen the kind of trouble we'd be in if we used a non-optimized animation, Let's take a look at the optimized animation. So I'm gonna switch this over, and again, I'm gonna start my test, let it run for about 15 seconds. Right away, you should notice that the timeline results are much cleaner. There are far fewer paints. Okay, so that's about good. I'm gonna stop this test, and we'll take a look at our results. So in layout and rendering, there are still a few paints, but this is mostly from the initial rendering of the bubbles. Once we move into the core of the animation, most of the paints go away. Down here in CPU usage, our CPU usage is rated at 1%, which is much lower than before. Additionally, our energy impact is rated as low. Over on the left, less than 1% of the main thread is being dedicated to paints related to our animation. This means we have a great deal of bandwidth for the rest of our application's logic. Recall that in a real-world environment, you are going to have to analyze much more than just animation performance. So being able to write animations in such a way that they minimize your application's resource consumption is an incredibly useful skill to have. Safari provides great tools for analyzing CPU usage and energy impact, and it also gives a great breakdown of how much of the main thread is being used in regards to your application. So in addition to the standard performance tools, we saw that each browser brought something unique to the table. Safari had the CPU and energy impact tool, Chrome has the performance monitor, and Firefox has the animation inspector. It's also important to note that you should test your animations in different browsers. It's not sufficient enough to test your animation in one browser as each browser handles animations a little bit differently. It's also worth it to utilize all the tools you have at your disposal to ensure that your animations are as performant as possible. So feel free to visit any of these links for more reading about the topics that we discussed today, including Ionic animations and the browser tools. Also, be sure to check out the link at the bottom to see the code for my wallet demo application. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Liam DeBeezy. Thank you all for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the conference.